All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. This is a show we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your tour guide around the swag, see what's coming at you. And we are going to recap all the action from week two. Pretty entertaining week of football, man. A lot of um, a lot of teams had home openers this week. They had seven home openers this week. So um, pretty much everybody's had a home game except for um, Texas Southern, Alcorn, and Valley. So um, they'll have their week openers coming up soon. Um, so we're not going to waste a lot of time, man. It was 12 games on the schedule. We're going to kind of go through them all and uh, take a look at, at what happened. So before we do all of that, uh, our week three pick them is up. Um, going to post the uh, going to post the link on all my socials. Uh, Facebook is Swag Talk, Instagram, Swag, Swag Talk, Twitter, Swag Talk 76. Um, so you, you can find the link there. Um, we will be posting um, the leaderboard um, probably sometime during the week. Um, at the at the week two's action, so y'all keep it locked there. Winner does get a championship belt at the end of the season, so y'all keep it locked here. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment your thoughts on week two. And we'll get ready for week three on Wednesday. Um, our first HBCU top ten will be dropping on Tuesday, Thursday. Um, Swag Smoke uh, live six p.m. Central, seven p.m. Eastern. And next Sunday, we will recap all the action from week three. So that's our weekly schedule in a nutshell. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this uh, recap. And we will start off with the first game of the day, which was Bethune-Cookman taking on Mercer. Uh, the Bears were able to defeat Bethune-Cookman by a score of 31-2. to um, After a scoreless first first quarter, uh, mile, I mean, at the scoreless first quarter, Mercer was able to score three second quarter touchdowns, um, all on passes from DJ Smith. One went to Braden Smith for 50 yards, one went for Park, Parker Robel for 14 yards, and the other one went to Keelan Parks, Parsons for 35 yards. And that will give the Bears a 21 to nothing halftime lead. Uh, in the third quarter, they will get a one yard touchdown run to up the score to 28 to nothing. Uh, Bethune Cookman will get a safety um, in the third quarter to make the score 28 to 2. And then in the fourth quarter, a 28 yard field goal would give the Bears the final margin of 31 to 28. Um, Mercer 25 first down, but Thune Cookman 10, 221 yards of, off of rushing offense for the Bears, uh, 46 carries, 4.8 yards per carry, one touchdown, but Thune Cookman 29 yards on 26 attempts, 1.1 uh, yards per carry, no touchdowns, 244 through the air for Mercer. 19 to 25, three touchdowns, one interception. With Thune Cookman, 127 yards through the air, 14 of 29, no touchdowns, one interception. 465 yards of total offense for Mercer, 6.5 yards per play, no fumbles. They did have 15 penalties for 133 yards, so they really were <laughs> heavily penalized in this game. Uh, but Thune Cookman, 156 total yards, 2.8 yards per play. They had two fumbles and they lost them both, and they had five penalties for 35 yards. Uh, Mercer averaged 50.8 yards per punt. Bethune Cookman 44.3. Uh, 33 of 12 for Mercer on third down. Bethune Cookman was 0 for 12 on third down. Uh, the Bears 1 of 3 on fourth down. Wildcats 1 of 1 on fourth down. 3 for 4 in the red zone for Mercer. 0 for 1 for BCU. Uh, Wildcats did have three sacks on the night, so they, that's something to kind of hang your head on. Uh, two sacks for Mercer um, individually. DJ Smith, 20, 17 to 22 for 237 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked three times. Uh, Cam Ransom uh, went the whole way for Bethune Cookman at quarterback. He was 14 to 29, 127 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, and two sacks. Uh, Dwayne McGee led Mercer with 74 yards and one touchdown on the ground. Uh, Courtney Reese led Bethune Cookman with 11 carries for 20 yards, um, receiving Keelan Parsons. They're the Bears with three catches for 63 yards and a touchdown. Also, Braden Smith had uh, one, one catch for 50 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Kobe Stewart had one catch for 50 yards for Bethune Cookman. Uh, Malik Hagen, Huggins had three catches for 33 yards. Uh, defensively, Isaac Dowling led Mercer with six tackles. Uh, Marquise Thomas had three tackles for loss. And uh, Andrew Zock and Carson Griffin each had a sack. Interception was by T.J. Moore, but Don Cookman was led by Raymond Woody III with nine tackles. Uh, 
And Jeek Brown had two tackles for loss and two sacks, so nice game for him. And uh, the interception was by Raymond Woody III. Um, like I said, this was a tight get, tight game early. Um, Don Cookman, obviously, when you look at their numbers, they couldn't really move the ball on the ground. Two fumbles also didn't help. Um, a big second quarter was really the difference in this game, if you're looking at it um, just kind of, you know, statistically. But Mercer was able, was able to do whatever they wanted to. They were pretty balanced, run and pass, yardage-wise. Um, but Don Cookman still is trying to find their offense. Um I don't know if, you know, I don't know if Ransom's going to be the guy moving forward at quarterback, but if you pick a guy and you, you know, and, and you roll with him and let him kind of develop, you know, that would be great. But uh, to me, Bethune Cook is a team that has to be able to run the football. I think a run, a strong run game, I think would be vital for them um, to help, you know, alleviate pressure on, on, on whoever the quarterback is. And so far this season, they haven't been able to do that. Um, it's still early, you know, they haven't played a conference game yet. So, you know, you can always hang your hat on that. Um, not a big fan of that philosophy, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so if they can, you know, if they can kind of get themselves right by the time swag play starts, they could still potentially be dangerous. Um, uh, they're, they're in a spot where I think, you know, at some point you gotta, you gotta pick up, a you gotta pick up a W. Um, you don't want to continue to lose. Um, knowing that, you know, swag players right, on, right around the corner, you know, you don't want to keep ha- having that uh, carrot dangling in front of you because at some point you, you do have to pick up wins. But um, their next game is at Western Michigan, so they have an FBS game next week. So um, you're looking, you're probably looking at another another L, another L before you, you know, before you get anywhere near conference play. Um, so, you know, I think they they they're in a tough spot right now, and it's early still, so we'll see how the Wildcats develop and move on. Uh, next game is uh, Florida A and M uh, taking on the Miami, Miami Hurricanes. Um, obviously, you know this game was kind of to be expected. Um, Florida A and M dropped a fifty six to nine decision um, to Miami. Really, you know, like I said, Miami jumped out to a fifteen nothing lead. Family was able to cut it to fifteen to three. Uh, in the first quarter, um, and then Miami, you know, went up 25, um, 25 to three, uh, before fam, you got a field goal at the half, uh, to make it 25 to six. And, you know, uh, Miami scored three touchdowns in the third quarter, uh, to really extend this lead. And then they were able to kind of close the door. Um, I, I, you know, really, really, really just, you know, slam the door shut. Um, with a couple scores in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, you, you kind of, you know, like I said, these kind of games, I mean, you kind of, to me, you, you kind of want to be able to play clean. Um, fam, you did have three interceptions that they threw, so, you know, that doesn't help you in games like this. Um, Miami's playing good football right now, so, you know, you kind of expected them to, you know, to kind of try to keep themselves um Keep yourself up to par and not not really get caught up in in, in lollygagging and messing around. So they you know they they took care of business as a kind of a kind of slow start for them. But um, fam, you finished with 13 first downs, Miami 31, uh, Rattlers 52 yards on the ground, 2.1 yards per carry, two fit 225 on the ground for uh, Miami, 5.9 yards per carry, um, four touchdowns. 138 yards passing for FAMU. Like I say, the three interceptions, 15 to 28, uh, no touchdowns, three interceptions, 324 yards for Miami through the air, 26 to 33, three touchdowns, no interceptions, 190 yards of offense for the Rattlers. Uh, they did fumble twice. They didn't lose either one of them. They had six penalties for 45 yards, average 3.6 yards per play, Miami 549. Total offense, uh, 71 plays, 7.7 yards per play. They fumbled once but didn't lose it. They had eight penalties for 58 yards. FAMU, 45.3 yard per punt average. Uh, Miami did not punt in this game. FAMU was 3 of 13 on third down. Miami, 8 of 12. Uh, FAMU didn't attempt the fourth down. Miami was 0 for 2. Um, FAMU did get in the red zone twice. They kicked two field goals. Uh, Miami will got in the red zone seven times. They scored and got in the red zone eight times. They scored seven. Uh, Miami, Miami had five sacks. FAMU two. 
individually, we let's see what we have. Uh, Daniel Richardson was 13 or 17 for 131 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked five times. Uh, Junior Maritovic was two of 11 for seven yards. Uh, Cam Ward led Miami going 20 of 26 for 304 yards uh, and three touchdowns on the night. He was sacked once. Uh, Dorian Collier led family with five carries for 31 yards. Uh, Damian, Damian Martinez led Miami with 11 carries for 91 yards and a touchdown. Mark Frazier, Mark Fletcher, excuse me, five for 42 and a touchdown. Jamar Gassett had five catches for FAMU for 57 yards. Xavier Restrepo, four for 104 and a touchdown to lead the Hurricanes. Uh, Jaron Fox had eight tackles. Uh, Naron Jenkins also had eight tackles. And Deco Wilson had eight tackles to lead the Rattlers. Uh, tackles for loss, uh, Hines, Hunter, Apong, each had one tackle for loss. Uh, Hines had a sack to lead the defense, and Miami was led by uh, Francisco Muoga with five uh, with five tackles. Jaden Harris also had five tackles. Uh, T- uh, Tyler Barron had three and a half tackles for loss and three sacks for um, – for the Hurricanes, and they had interceptions from Hayes, uh, Wesley Bissaint, and Pruitt. So, you know, this game kind of, you know, pretty much went the way you kind of expected it to. You know, nothing, nothing outrageous on either side, really. Um, Family does get a bye week since they this is their third game already. Um, so they get a bye week, and um, they get ready for Troy uh, after they come off of that bye, and then they'll be in Swag Clay. Uh, that takes us two hour third game on the schedule, and that's Alabama State taking on Miles. Uh, coming into this game, obviously, you know, with the quarterback situation at Alabama State uh, this past week, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of uncertainty from pretty much everybody, including me. You know, we didn't really know um, how this Alabama State team would look with both of their start, both of their, well, they both started in the last game. So both of the guys who played quarterback uh, going out for injury, um, you were left with an unproven guy behind both of those guys um, against a team at Miles who typically tends to be pretty hungry against Bama State. Um, you know, I didn't go as far to say that Miles would win the game, but I thought Bama, offensively, I thought Bama State would not look look so good. And um, it, it was kind of a mixed bag. You know, I, I think they, you know, they did enough to win this game, 24-3. Um, to three. Uh, did they look great? Not really, which is not, the, you know, which was kind of to be expected, but they didn't get upset either. So, you know, they kind of just kept the car on the road, so to speak, and, and you know, survived another day and, and, and seeing if you can get um, O'Brien back. Um, so, like I said, 24 to 3, um, victory over Miles Hornets improved to 1 and 1. Um, it was all, you know, Bama State. Um, Jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead uh, after an uh, Asa Gray 60 yard pass from James Hayes and a uh, Baylor Cannon 22 yard field goal put the Hornets up 10 to nothing before Miles got a 44 yard field goal. And then um, Daquan Kinsey had a 65 yard touchdown run for the Hornets, um, which was an ex- one of the explosive plays that they needed. Uh, that came um, late in the um, about midpoint of the fo- second quarter. And then um, with 13 seconds left in the half, uh, Jalen Jones caught an eight-yard pass from Hayes to make the score 24 to three at the half. And neither team scored in the um, in the second half. If you want to kind of see how this game went um, in terms of possessions in the second half, uh, Bama State um, they fumbled on their first possession um, in the third quarter. They threw an interception on their second possession. They missed the field goal. Um, Oh no no no! So I, I I looked at the wrong way. Um, they they got a fumble um, on their first possession. They punt it, then they fumble, then they punt it, then they punt it, then they punt it, then they punt it, and then the end of the game. So they did not have a good second half offensively. Um, five yards on their first drive, minus twenty seven on the next drive, minus two on the third drive, twenty five yard, twenty three yards on the fourth drive, minus two on their fifth drive, six on the six drive and eight on a seven drive. So obviously nothing really offensively um, in terms of yardage. Uh, and that 
kind of was more what I expected. Like in the first half, um, they 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 played what I thought would be their second half um, numbers wise in the first half, and the first half numbers were in the second half. So they just, you know, they really did not do a lot in this game after, you know, after being able to score 24 points in the first half. But the defense uh, did not allow Miles to do much, and that that helped them a lot. Uh, Miles, 12 first downs. Bama State, 10 first downs. 46 yards rushing for the uh, Golden Bears. Uh, 191 yards for the Hornets. 4.7 yards per carry. 1.6 yards per carry for Miles. One touchdown for Bama State, none for Miles. 188 yards through the air for the Golden Bears, 17 to 34, no touchdown, two intercepts, two interceptions, 88 yards passing for the Hornets, 60 of that did come on that touchdown, uh, five of 12 for two touchdowns, one interception, 234 yards for Miles, 63 plays, 3.7 yards per play. They fumbled four times. They had two uh, two losses, so they turned the ball over four times. Uh, 279 yards for the Hornets, 53 plays, 5.3 yards per play. They fumbled twice and lost one. So uh, combined six turnovers in this game, so pretty sloppy there. Uh, Ten penalties for Alabama State for 80 yards, six for 55 for Miles. Uh, 37.2 yard average per punt for Miles. Uh, 35.6 for Alabama State. 4-14 on third down for Miles. Three or 13 for Alabama State. Neither team converted a fourth down. Uh, 0 for 4 for Miles. 0 for 1 for Alabama State. Miles 0 for 1 in the red zone. Alabama State two or two in the red zone. Um, one sack for Miles, four for Bama State. Individually, uh, the Golden Bears were led by Cam Ivory going 16 to 32 for 168 yards. No touchdown, two interceptions. He was sacked three times. Uh, James Hayes went five of 11 for Bama State for 88 yards. Two touchdowns, one interception, one sack. Uh, Gennaro Scott, 18 carries for Miles, 57 yards. Uh, Dequan Kinsey had a big game for Belmont State, 13 carries, 137 yards, and one touchdown. Um, looked like he can be a big weapon in the run game moving forward for them. Uh, Trevante Abner had four catches for miles for 57 yards. Uh, Greg, one for 60, and a touchdown. Belmont State had um, six, uh, let's, they had five completions on the night, and they all went to different guys, so um, they had five guys catch one pass apiece. Uh, Jeremiah da- Hudson Davis led Miles with 11 tackles. Two tackles for loss went to Jermichael Rogers. And um, Antonio Reeves and Candy McCoy each had a half a sack apiece. Interception went to Jalen Chambers. Family State was led by Trey Corn Thomas with six tackles, three tackles for loss, and three sacks. Huge game for him. Also, three forced fumbles. Uh, that, that might be defensive player of the week numbers right there. Um, that was a really dominant game for him. Um, Keen Lewis also had six tackles. But when you look at, you know, a guy that can have all of that, that that's that's a game-changing performance uh, for your team. Uh, interceptions went to Scarborough and Burgess. Um, so the, the top guy has got, got interceptions. But, you know, all in all, like I said, this was a game you just wanted to kind of survive, you know, they were on Hornets were on upset alert. Um, they did manage to survive that week. And, you know, now you, you kind of just see where, where they go from here. Um, obviously, there's going to have to be some, you know, some growth of the offense. If, you know, if, if both your quarterbacks are out again, um, you do play Samford next week. So that's going to be an interesting test there. Um, so it, it's going to be interesting to see how they juggle these off these non-conference games with, you know, with the, quarterback injuries and everything. So that's, that's something to kind of monitor as we move forward. Um, we'll be really inter- interesting to see how they handle this moving forward. Uh, game number four on the, on the day was Alabama A&M defeating Kentucky State 49-7 to um, in another SWAC SIAC matchup. There were a ton of those this week. Um, and and uh, the Bulldogs got their first victory of the season, like I said, 49-7. They jumped out 28 to nothing at, at the half um, on touchdowns from Xavier Langford uh, on a one-yard run. Duke Miller caught a 38-yard pass from uh, Quarry Brown. Jacoby Hewitt caught an eight-yard pass from Brown. Uh, Barry White caught a 20-yard pass from Avion Smith. And those were the four touchdowns in the first half to put the Bulldogs up 28 to nothing. Uh, they would score two third-quarter touchdowns. Ryan Morrow 
will get an 18-yard pass from Brown. And Duke Miller will get a second touchdown of the night from 16 yards out from Brown to go up 42 to nothing. And then Colton Nero will get a four-yard run for the Bulldogs in the fourth quarter to make us go 49 to nothing. And Jaden Hale would um, catch a catch a, um, eight-yard pass from Juan Ganius uh, to put Kentucky State on the board at 49 to seven. 15 first down for the Thoroughbreds, 30 for the Bulldogs, 38 yards rushing for Kentucky State, uh, at 26, 266 yards running for Alabama a 6.7 yards per carry, 1.8 yards per carry for the Thoroughbreds, uh, two touchdowns for the Horn, two touchdowns for the Bulldogs, no, none for the Thoroughbreds, 151 yards passing for um, Kentucky State, 30, 339, 393 yards for the Bulldogs, 19-32. Uh, passing for thoroughbreds, one touchdown, one interception. 29 to 39 for the Bulldogs, five touchdowns. They did have two interceptions. Uh, 189 yards for KSU. 53 plays, 3.6 yards per play. They fumbled three times, lost two. Only two penalties for 10 yards for them. Um, 659 yards for the Bulldogs. 79 plays, 8.3 yards per play. No, no fumbles. So they did force three turnovers, although they did commit two. Uh, they had 14 penalties for 139 yards, so a really sloppy game for the Bulldogs in terms of penalties. Uh, they did not punt on the night. Um, 32 yards per punt average for the Thoroughbreds. Uh, Bama and them 14 of 14 on third down. That's about as efficient as you can get. Uh, five of 12 for um, the Thoroughbreds. Obviously, no fourth down attempts for the Bulldogs. 0 for 1 for the Thoroughbreds. They had two sacks. Bama uh, and them had three sacks. On the night, individually, the Thoroughbreds were led by Juan Gaines, going 16 to 28, passing 144 yards, one touchdown, one interception, say twice. Uh, Brown led the Bulldogs, going 19 to 26 for 278 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked once. Um, Jalen Middleton led KSU with 21 yards rushing. Donovan Eaglin, 102 yards. On the ground for the Bulldogs on 13 carries, average 7.8 yards per carry. Uh, Ryan Morrow had 69 yards on the ground as well. Kale Anderson had six catches for Kentucky State for 74 yards. Duke Miller led AM with eight catches for 132 yards and two touchdowns. Big game for him. Uh, Trayvon Pope had 11 tackles for Kentucky State. Uh, Isaiah Clay had one and a half tackles for loss. He also had one and a half sacks. And Deshaun Tisdale had two interceptions. Uh, Alabama AM was led by Cortez Andrews with 11 tackles. He also had two and a half tackles for loss and one sack. That's a really, really good game. Um, interceptions were by, was by Cardell, Carl Dell, Patrick, Patrick. So, you know, these kind of games, you know, this is kind of the effort that you want. You want to come out. You want to jump on these guys early. You want to get as many guys to get action as you can. Um, and you want to get out of there, you know, relatively healthy. You want to get out of there with, you know, with not a lot to have to worry about cleaning up. Um, obviously, the only concern for me in this game from Bama and them was the penalties. Um, but that kind of stuff happens in games like this. So, you know, you want to try to keep it, you know, you want to keep it a little bit more disciplined as you move forward. But Bulldogs have another game against a D2 opponent in Georgetown or Kentucky next week. So, not, you know, it doesn't, does you. You kind of can expect that probably uh, another game similar to this um, next week. So they have an opportunity to kind of get a lot of guys action early in the season before they get into conference play, which their first conference game is not till September um, 28th when they play at Florida and m So they have two more non-conference games uh, in the next two weeks before they get into conference play. So you have opportunity to start to kind of clean some things up. Um, but this was a game where they, you know, you did what you you were supposed to do. You came out, you you you, you, showed, you scored points, you got everybody involved, and um, you, you played a solid game. So there's not much more you can ask for um, than that in that aspect. Uh, next game is Gremlin taking on Tuskegee. Uh, the Gremlin Tigers beat the Tuskegee Golden Tigers by a score of 37 to 20. Um, th- this was a game that Gremlin basically. Jumped out to a 37-2-3 halftime lead before um, before they kind of, you know, let, let off the gas a little bit. And, and Tuskegee was able to score um, 13. They were able to score uh, 17 points in the second half 
to kind of make the score look a little bit closer than what it was. Um, but the first half was all Gremlin. They had a um, Miles Carley through. Uh, he threw four touchdowns all in the first half. Um, one to uh, Covetus Knighton for two yards. Nick Howard caught a nine-yard pass from, my, from Crowley for a touchdown. Tony Phillips had a four-yard touchdown reception. And Javon Robinson had a 53-yard touchdown reception. So four TD passes for Miles Crowley um, in the first half. And then they were able to get um, a field goal and a scoop and score on defense to um, like to go into the half up 37 to nothing before Tuskegee opened up, um, before Tuskegee closed the first half with a field goal. Then they got a 13-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. And then in the fourth quarter, they got another field goal, this time 47 yards out, and a 15-yard touchdown pass uh, late in uh, with 35 seconds left in the game. So, you know, they they really, you know, this was one of those games, like I said, Groundland really had this game under control. Um, Tuskegee, I guess you could say, they scored a touchdown early in the third quarter, but the next 10 points came with, with less than five minutes left in the game. So at that point, the game was pretty much over. Um, Gremlin, like I say, you know, you would kind of like to see them score a little bit more, but when you got, you know, you know, things just didn't go that way, but they did what they needed to do. Great first half for them. Um, showed a lot of, you know, a lot of potential there. And Miles Crawley, huge game through the air. Um, I would like to see the, um, you know, just looking at the way that the game went, I would have loved to see Gremlin run the ball better in a game like this. I think this is the kind of game where the second half you just kind of lean on these guys um, with the run game when you got a, a lead like that. But Tuskegee, uh, 23 first downs, Gremlin 14, 105 yards on the ground for Tuskegee, 30 carries, three and a half yards per carry, one touchdown. Uh, Gremlin, 62 yards rushing, uh, 2.4 yards per carry, no touchdowns. 275 yards through the air for Tuskegee, 21 of 39. They had one touchdown, two interceptions. Gremlin, 322 yards through the air, 18 of 30. Um, four touchdowns, no interceptions. 380 yards of offense for Tuskegee. Uh, 69 plays, 5.5 yards per play. They fumbled once and lost it. So they had three turnovers on the night, five penalties for 45 yards. Uh, 384 yards for Gremlin. Total offense, 56 plays, 6.9 yards per play. Um, they had three fumbles but didn't lose any. And they had 16 penalties, 166 yards. That, you know, regardless of anything, that's that, you know, those numbers always just don't look good. Um, you want to always clean that up um, because those kind of penalties, you know, whether they're defensive penalties, which can extend drives, offense, offense, offensive penalties, which can end drive. These kind of penalties can take points off the board. You know, they can just kill momentum. So um, you really, you know, you really don't want to see numbers that high no matter what the opponent so, you know, that's something that if I say that they would need to clean up, it would be that. And I would like to see the run the run game be a little bit better, um, especially with the talent that they, they got in the backfield. But this is only the second game under a new offense coordinator. So, you know, there, there's always some grace there. 36-yard um, average on punts for Tuskegee, 41 and a half for Gramlin. Uh, 5 or 17 on third down for Tuskegee, 4 or 12 for Gramlin. Uh, three or four in the red zone for Tuskegee, four for four for Groundland. Both teams had two sacks on the night. Golden Tigers were led offensively by uh, Christopher Robinson. He was 13 of 28 passing, uh, no touchdown, two interceptions. He was sacked twice. Miles Carley was 16 of 26, 304 yards, four touchdowns, uh, no interceptions. He was sacked once. Uh, Johnny Morris led the Golden Tigers with 51 yards on the ground and one touchdown. Uh, Trey Bradford led Gramlin with 52 yards on, on 13 carries. Gabriel Garman led Tuskegee with five catches for 116 yards. Devon Robinson led Gramlin with four catches for 151 yards and one touchdown through the air. Uh, Tuskegee was led by Rossi Grimes with 12 tackles. He also had one tackle for loss. Uh, Kaquan Kimber, Kimber had two tackles for loss to lead the defense. Uh, Barfield, Barfield and Moore had sex, uh, no interceptions. Gremlin was led defensively by Andrew Jones with 11 tackles. He also had two tackles for loss along with Bryce Cage, who had two tackles for loss. Uh, Jones had half a sack, and Cage led the defense with one sack. And interception went to uh, Braden Barley and Marcellus Johnson. They each had one interception for Gremlin. So, you know, like I say, sometimes these kind of games can be 
you know, an all out, you know, just smashing where you just, you know, dominate this team from pillar to post. And then it's games like this where you kind of jump out to a, a lead and then, you know, things kind of don't really go further than that. And then a couple late scores for another team can make the game look a little bit closer than what it was. But this was the game that Gremlin was in no position to ever be in danger. Um, and so they got a they got a solid win at home and the first win of the season. And they go to Texas A&M Commerce next week. Um, should be a game that Gremlin should I, I I you know I think Gremlin has a great chance in this game. So um, we'll we'll preview the game on Wednesday. But I do they have I do think they have a great chance in this game. Uh, which would be a good out of conference victory for them, um, and put them in position to head into conference play um, in a couple weeks uh, with some momentum after um, they play a big game at, at home against Jackson State on the twenty first. So they have two non conference games before they jump into conference play, um, which they have opportunity to kind of continue to build momentum. Uh, our next game on the night is Jackson State taking on Lane College. Um, and this is the kind of game that I said where you, you know, you see one team just kind of jump all over this team and, and just never really let them in the game. A huge first quarter for Jackson State, 31 points, put this game totally out of reach. Um, JSU scored 31 first quarter points and they scored 58 unanswered points before Lane got their, got their only touchdown with three minutes left in the game. Um, Cameron McCoy led Jackson State to a their first touchdown with a 20-yard run. Um, Marvin Landry caught a one-yard pass from McCoy. Um, Ahmad Miller had a six-yard run. Uh, Basil had a 38-yard field goal. And then McCoy had a 60-yard run um, to put Jackson State up 31 to nothing in the first quarter. Uh, Jonas Fortillion had a 28-yard pass from McCoy. And um, Kobe Paul caught a four-yard pass from Jacoby and Morgan. And Basil got another field goal from 35 yards out to make the halftime score 45 to nothing. Uh, ba- Basil would get, um, excuse me, he made the score 48 to nothing at half. Um, Isaiah Spencer would catch a 55 yard pass from Morgan to put Jackson State up 55 to nothing. And then Basil would get his third third field goal of the game, this time for 28 yard, 23 yards out to make the score 58 to nothing. And then Ike Brown will run a two yard touchdown for a lane to give them their only score and make the final score 58 to seven. Uh, 10 first downs for Lane, 16 for Jackson State, 75 yards rushing for Lane, uh, 33 carries, 2.3 yards per carry, one touchdown, 184 yards for Jackson State on the ground, 26 carries, 7.1 yards per carry, three touchdowns, uh, 31 yards passing for Lane, six of 23, no touchdown, two interceptions, uh, Jackson State, 250 yards through the air, 14 to 20, four touchdowns, no interceptions. 106 yards on the uh, uh, total offense for the Dragons. Uh, 56 plays, 1.9 yards per play. They fumbled twice, didn't lose either. They had four penalties for 30 yards. Jackson State, 424 total offense. 46 plays, 9.4 yards per play. Uh, no fumbles at all. Seven penalties for 54 yards. Jackson State, 42 yard average per point. Lane, 23.6. Lane was 1 of 14 on third down, 2 of 5 on fourth down. Jackson State, 4 of 7 on third down. Uh, no fourth down attempts. Uh, one one for one in the red zone for Lane. Jackson State five or five. Uh, Jackson State four sacks. Lane none. Uh, Dragons were led individually by uh, Jared Gaston. He was two of nine for 21 yards. Uh, Nigel Johnson was four of 14 for 10 yards. And uh, he had two interceptions. He was sacked four times. Jacoby and Morgan, nine of 11 for Jackson State, 150 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks. Cameron McCoy, five of nine for 100 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks. Uh, Ike Brown, 10 carries, 52 yards for Lane, one touchdown. Uh, McCoy had six carries, 107 yards for Jackson State, and two touchdowns. Um, after that, nobody really stood out in the run game for Jackson State. Um, so that you know, I, I you know, I kind of expect them to run the ball better as a uh, as a unit um, as they move forward. But they did get a lot of people, a lot of carries. Um, which is what you want in a game like this. Kylan Dewey uh, had one catch for 11 yards to lead Lane. Um, Carl Pitts also had one catch for 11 yards. Isaiah Spencer, four for 107 and one touchdown. Uh, Landry, two for uh, 43 and a touchdown. Fortillion, two for 38 and a touchdown. Uh, Jeremiah Brown led Lane with six tackles. 
Um, Willie Miller had three tackles for loss, no sacks, and no interceptions. Jackson State was led by Jeremiah Williams with five tackles, Joshua Nobles, and True Thompson each had five tackles apiece. Um, Thompson and Ward each had two tackles for loss. Uh, Pulliam had one and a half sacks to lead the defense. And um, Guthrie and Hawkins had interceptions uh, for the Tigers. They have a couple big games in the next two weeks. Um, at, at home against Southern and at Gramlin, both games are not are not swag games. So, you know, they have a couple big big games that are, are, are swag games, but they don't count in the standings. So they have a really, you know, really good opportunity to kind of get, you know, get some swag action under their belts for two weeks, but the results don't count. So in terms of swag, swag play, they still count in the standings, obviously, but not in the swag standings. Um, so they have opportunity to kind of, you know, make some headway and, you know, clean up some mistakes that they've had in these first couple games and, and really continue to develop who they are. Um, just, so, you know, they did exactly what you want to do with a team like this. You don't play with them. You knock them out the box early. You get other guys action. You know, you get to see some flashes from guys that you've been looking to see some flashes from. And then you you move forward. So, you know, basically a, a, a body books effort for Jackson State and a, a big win for them. Um, and they really dominated Lane in this game. Uh, next game is uh, Rice taking on Texas Southern. Uh, this game, you know, I I didn't, you know, and I will say I didn't think Rice would score as many points as they did. Or TSU would score more points than they did, but Rice won this game sixty nine to seven. Um, and this is another game where one team, you know, basically jumped uh, jumped all over the other team before that that team scored a, a, a late touchdown, which TSU didn't score that first, that only touchdown to 14 seconds left in the game when uh, Jordan Davis threw a 12 yard touchdown pass to Cordell Rogers. Um, as, by that point, the score was already 69 to nothing. As Rice was able to do whatever they wanted to do in this game, they had a five yard touchdown run to open up the scoring, a four yard touchdown pass, a 34 yard touchdown pass, a 34 yard pick six, a five yard touchdown run. And um, a 25 yard field goal, all that came in the first half. They went into the half of 38 to nothing. Uh, third quarter, they got um, they got a 71 yard touchdown run, a 44 yard field goal, and a five yard touchdown run. And then in the fourth quarter, they got a 33 yard touchdown run and a um, 22 yard touchdown run um, to give them 69 points in this game. Uh, TSU. Finished with nine first downs, Rice 24, 38 yards rushing for Texas Southern, um, 1.1 yard per carry, no touchdown, 329 yards on the ground for Rice, uh, 32 carries, 100, I mean, 10.3 yards per carry, six touchdowns, uh, 49 yards passing for t- Texas Southern, uh, 10 of 19, one touchdown, two interceptions. Rice had 204 yards through the air, 22 or 32, two touchdowns, one interception. Um, 87 yards of offense for Texas Southern, 53 plays, 1.6 yards per play. They had six, six penalties for 40 yards, no fumbles. Rice, 533 total offense, 64 plays, 8.3 yards per play, no uh, fumbles, eight penalties for 72 yards. Rice punted once for 53 yards. TSU, 28.1 yards per punt. They punted 10 times. Uh, they were 415 on third down, no fourth down attempts. Uh, Rice, three of eight on third down, two or two on fourth down. Uh, one for one in the red zone for TSU, five or five for Rice. TSU no sex, Rice four. Uh, individually, TSU was led by uh, Jordan Davis. He was eight of 13 uh, for 42 yards, one touchdown, one interception, three sacks. Jace Wilson played yesterday. He went two of six for seven yards. No uh, KC Cooper. I mean, K- KJ Cooper, excuse me, no, no KJ Cooper in this game. Um, EJ Warner was 20 or 30 for Rice, 189 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Danny Green led TSU with seven carries for 18 yards. Dean Connors had nine for 113 for Rice and three touchdowns, averaged 12.6 yards per carry. Also, uh, Taj Atkins had 11 carries for 91 yards and two touchdowns. He averaged 8.3 yards per carry. Uh, Cordell Rogers led TSU with three catches for 23 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Matt Sykes led Rice with two catches of 47 yards and a touchdown. Braylon Walker had four for 47 and a touchdown. Uh, Canary Simmons had 13 tackles for TSU to lead the Tigers. Um, they had uh, half a tackle for loss from Bargardy and Darrensburg. Uh, no sacks. 
Uh, interception went to Henson. Rice was led on defense by Chibi Nwajaku with five tackles and Blaze Tito also had five tackles. Uh, two tackles for loss for Tito. He also had one and a half sacks to lead that defense. And interception went to Tyson Flowers and Marcus Williams. You know, this is a, you know, you got flush this game. This game. I mean, not a lot to take from a game like this. Um, you just did not play well on either side of the ball. Uh, especially coming off of a big victory. I never, you know, I didn't come into this game thinking TSU would win this game or even be close, but I thought they would have a better effort than this. I thought they would hold Rice down a little bit more. Um, Rice really took out a lot of frustrations they had from last week on TSU. And so you know, not like I said, not a lot to take from a game like this. So you look at uh, where the Tigers go from here. Um, they are off next week, so they have a chance to kind of clean some things up before they come back the following week uh, at Lamar on the twenty first, um, and then they close out the month at, at home against Jackson State uh, in back in swag place. So they, you know, they kind of had you know the tail of two weeks. You know, a, a great week last week. Big win, um, and then you turn around the following week and just not really look good at all. So I, I think you, you know, I think you just flush this game, man. Take what you can from it, and then just you know move on. Use this bye week to kind of refocus and regroup um, because you have to kind of find some 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 of that rhythm that you had from previous weeks. Um, the next game we have is Southern against Savannah State, um, where I said in the previous two, uh, previous three. Uh, four games against SIAC opponents. Uh, the team got off to a great start, and you know they either held on, you know, held them off, or they continue to, you know, throttle them. Uh, this was a game that, on one hand, it 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 looked a lot closer than it probably had any right to be, um, and then on the other hand, it really wasn't as close as it looked. Um, when you look at defensively for Southern, I thought they played a really good game. Uh, they did give up one huge, huge play. Uh, which was kind of a broken play, and they had a blocked field goal for the second week in a row. Um, offensively was where the issue was for Southern. A uh, really slow start, um, just not, you know, just not a, a great offensive effort early. Uh, made a quarterback change, and then things kind of took off for Southern. Uh, Savannah State, other than that one long touchdown run they had and a field goal, they never really did anything offensively. I thought the defense played pretty salty until they got tired which is to be expected in a game where you, you don't really have the ball much. Um, and Southern won this game 42 to 10. Uh, Southern actually scored first on a 44-yard field goal. Then uh, then Savannah State got an 81-yard touchdown run on a, like, on a very broken play. Um, the quarterback and running back had a miscommunication. Um, the quarterback kind of ran into a couple of people in the backfield, bounced off, angled toward the sideline. I think Southern thought he was going to run out of bounds, but he – he cut it upfield and took it down the sideline for an 81-yard touchdown, and that was basically Savannah State's offense for the rest of the night. Uh, Southern would then get um, two field goals to take the lead at 9-7, one from 40, uh, 38 yards and one from 49 yards. And then they would score their first touchdown um, of the night with 110 left in the first half um, to go into the half of 16-7. After a Southern field goal got blocked, uh, Savannah State got a 33-yard field goal to make it score 16 to 10, and then Southern would score the remaining points um, with a 31-yard touchdown pass, um, a four-yard touchdown run, a 33-yard pass, and a one-yard run uh, to make the final score 42 to 10. Uh, one first down on the night for Savannah State, 28 for Southern, uh, 50 yards on the ground for Savannah State, um, one touchdown, they average 2.4 yards per carry. 191 yards for Southern on the ground, 47 carries, 4.1 yard per carry, two touchdowns. Uh, total offense, 65, uh, excuse me, passing offense, 15 yards for Savannah State, seven of 16, no touchdowns, no interceptions. 366, 363 yards for Southern, 21 and 39, three touchdowns, one interception, uh, 65 yards of offense for, for Savannah State, 37 plays, 1.8 yards for play, no fumbles. They had six penalties. For 40 yards, 554 yards of offense for Southern, 86 plays, 6.4 yards per play. They had one fumble, didn't lose it. Eight penalties for 71 yards. Uh, Savannah State punted for 40 yards per, per punt average, Southern 38. Uh, Savannah State, no, uh, 0 for 11 on third down, Southern 11 of 20. 
Uh, one for one on fourth down, Savannah State, no fourth down attempts. One or two in the red zone for the Tigers. Uh, four or five in the red zone for Southern. Um, four sacks for Savannah State, which, um, they, like I said, the defensive, the defensive front was pretty solid, especially early. Um, like I said, they wore down as the game went on, but they were very, very aggressive early and gave Southern a lot of problems early in this game. Uh, two sacks for Southern. Individually, um, Jaden Adams, 7 of 16 for 15 yards. No touchdown, no interceptions, one sack. Uh, Cesarean t set came in for uh, Southern after a slow start by the offense and had a great, great, great performance. Uh, 17 of 29, 316 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked once. Uh, Noah Biden was 14 for 47 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked three times. Um, Adams led uh, Savannah State with 81 yards and a touchdown. Um, Kobe Dillon led Southern with 13 carries and 52 yards. Kendrick Grimes, 13 for 45 and a touchdown. Uh, receiving, Deshaun Mitchell had one catch for eight yards. Um, Darren Morris led Southern with six catches for 77 yards um, and, and a touchdown. Tavare Bruton led uh, Savannah State with nine tackles. Darian Bell had nine tackles. Uh, Bruton had one and a half tackles for loss, um, along with um, William Jones to lead that defense. Uh, they had sacks from Chisholm, Bentley, and Bell. Uh, interception was by uh, Creary. Southern was led defensively by Elijah West with four tackles. Dar- Darius Hen- Harry had four tackles as well. Uh, Brister had two tackles for loss for Southern. West had one and a half. Uh, Harry had one and a half. Givens had one and a half. Uh, Bruce, uh, Brister and Paige each had sacks. So, like, you know, this, this was one of those games that, you know, you, it, good and bad, you know, let's just put it that way. Good and bad, you know, Southern had got, you know, they got off to a slow start offensively. Uh, they gave up a huge play defensively. Defense locked in set from that point on. Offense made a big quarterback change, uh, early, uh, in, early in the game, where early in the second quarter and the offense, move from there. So that, that makes it interesting what Southern goes from here. Uh, they play Jackson State and uh, Prairie View in the next, in the next couple of weeks um, before by a week. So they, you know, they, they have two tough games um, against SWAC opponents. One is a non-conference game, one is a conference game. So they have to buckle in, you know, they have to figure out this quarterback situation uh, moving forward. And, 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 you know, I think this, this decision can, this decision can make a huge Huge difference on the rest of the season. So this is a huge, huge decision for Southern. And uh, we'll definitely keep tabs on what's going on with this um, because this is one of the few situations, I think, where there isn't a guy who has taken that job and, and ran with it. Um, not the way you want to have a D2 type game, but, you know, it ended up a lot better than it started. And, you know, you can take that and, and, and move forward with that. Uh, our next game that we have is Prairie View. Taking on Northwestern State, Panthers big bounce back win, man. They, you know, they, they. Yeah, it was a game they probably could have won by more, but you know, coming off of a, a, a surprising loss, going on the road, uh, and getting a win, regardless of how you get it, I think that's huge. You know, I, I think they, you know, I think they kind of re- regained some of what they came into the season with. And um, they put themselves in a pretty good position moving forward to kind of continue to rebuild that momentum that they dropped from that first game. Now, next week, it's going to be another tough task. But, you know, for this week, I think they gave themselves some great momentum and some positivity moving forward. This was a pretty back and forth game um, early. Uh, Prairie View uh, fell behind 7 to nothing after a huge play early in the game. Uh, Northwestern State had a 71 yard touchdown pass with uh, with 14 46 left in the game in the first quarter. So, you know, one play, um, big pass for a touchdown. They fell behind seven nothing. We're able to get a, a, a response with four, uh, a 42 yard pass, uh, from Peters to uh, Thomas to tie the score by seven. Um, a, a pick six for uh, Northwestern State will put them up 14 to seven. And then Prairie will score the next 10 points. Um, on a 34-yard field goal and a five-yard touchdown run to go up 17-14. Another field goal from uh, 
Garcia Rodriguez to um, put the Panthers up 20 to 14 at the half. Uh, Northwestern State would get a touchdown early in the third quarter to take a one, one point lead, 21 20. Uh, PV, PV would get a, a four yard pass from Peter to Savage for, um, to put the Panthers up 27 21. And then they would get another field goal to go up 30 to 21. Um, another pick six for Northwestern State would give them a, uh, would put them behind 30 to 28. And then an 18 yard run for, um, the Panthers would put them up 37 28. And there was 756 left. Um, a 38 yard field goal from Northwestern State would make them score 30, um, 37 31. Um, when you look at what happened after, um, after that, uh, Prairie View would get the ball and they would have a pretty solid drive down to, um, down to the, um, they would get to the, um, to 35 and punt. And then, uh, Northwestern State would go, um, Basically, four and out before they threw an interception, and then PV would basically um, have another solid drive to use some more clock, and then Northwestern State would get get the ball and drive down to um, the Prairie View. Uh, they would get down and and almost getting you know almost be able to score, but couldn't couldn't seal the deal. So um, big win for Prairie View on the road, good bounce back win. And um, now that, you know, they can continue to move forward. 25 first downs for the Panthers, 16 for the Demons, 188 on the ground for Prairie View, 52 carries, 3.6 yards per carry, two touchdowns, 105 uh, yards for the Demons, 28 carries, 3.8 yards per carry, one touchdown, uh, 280 through the air for the Panthers, 18 to 33, um, two touchdowns, two interceptions. 12 or 31 for the Demons, one touchdown, one interception, 468 total offense for the Panthers, 85 plays, 5.5 yards per play. They had two fumbles, they lost one, so they turned the ball over three times. Um, 12 penalties, 124 yards. Um, like I said, it was a sloppy game for them. You cut down the penalties, you cut down those turnovers, you probably win this game going away. I mean, two of those turnovers led to, directly to touchdowns. So, you know, you can really look at it that way. And not be, you know, not be a if and a but type situation. Um, 282 for the Demons, 59 plays, 4.8 yards per play, uh, nine penalties, 61 yards. They prairie 10 or 20 on third down, one for one on fourth down, five or five to red zone, two sacks, two or 13 uh, on third down for the Demons, two or two on fourth down, one, uh, one for two in the red zone. They had two sacks. Uh, prairie View was led by Cam Peters, he played the whole game. 18 to 33, two touchdowns, two interceptions, two sacks. Uh, JT Fayard, 12 or 31 for the Demons, 177 yards, one touchdown, one interception, two sacks. Uh, Connor Wisham, 22 carries, 83 yards for the Panthers, one touchdown. Uh, Lamega McDowell, 12 for 53 and a touchdown. Kenneth Lacey, nine for 75 for the Demons and one touchdown. Uh, Shamar Savage, six of six catches, 133 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Miles Kit Denton, three catches, 103 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Javon Jackson led the Panthers with seven tackles. Uh, they had four guys with a tackle for loss apiece, and uh, two players with one sack. Interception went to Jones. Northwestern State was led by Blake Gauthier, Gother with um, 23 tackles. That's a crazy game for him. Uh, two tackles for loss, two sacks, one forced fumble. Uh, interceptions went to Brown and Rome. And like I said, just a, a big win for the Panthers. They play Michigan State next week and Southern the week after that. So um, you want to just kind of do the best you can to keep your momentum going um, because, you know, you, you don't want to drop too much momentum in that in that Michigan State game, knowing you got a conference game in the following week. Um, got a couple games that we're going to run through these last few games pretty quickly. Um, Valley battled against Lamar, man. They, they, they lost the game 28-14. They were actually down 21 to 21 14 in the third quarter. Um, in too deep into the fourth quarter before, um, Lamar basically slammed the door with a, a, a one yard touchdown run with a minute and four left in the game. Um, great, you know, great battle for Valley. Um, thought they would, you know, really get ran out of the stadium in this game, but they hung tight. Um, 21st down for the Delta Devils, 24 for the Cardinals. 
Uh, Valley just could not run the ball in this game. Only 72 yards on the ground, 36 carries, two yards per carry. They gave up 222 on the ground, uh, 37 carries, six yards per carry uh, for the Cardinals. 208 through the air for Valley, 21 of 36, two, two touchdowns, two interceptions. 216 through the air for Lamar, 12 of 30, two touchdowns, one interception, 280 yards for Valley, uh, 72 carries, 3.9 yards per carry. They had two in the two fumbles, didn't lose any six penalties, 54 yards, 438 total offense for the Cardinals, 67 plays, six and a half yards per play, no fumbles. They had 18 penalties for 157 yards. Uh, Valley, seven of 17 on third down, four of 12 for Lamar, two of four uh, for Valley on fourth down, two for two for Lamar, two of four in the red zone for Valley, three of three for Lamar. Both teams had multiple sacks, Valley with three, Lamar with two. Delta Devils were led by um, Jaden Sisk. He was 18 of 31 for 171 yards, one touchdown, one interception, two sacks. Uh, Tajarian Williams did throw a touchdown in this game. Uh, Robert Coleman, 12 of 30 for Lamar for 216 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Um, Williams led Valley with 44 yards rushing. Uh, Kalen Griffin led Lamar with 197 yards on the night and two touchdowns. Average 8.6 yards per carry. Uh, Nathan Rembert led Valley with nine catches for 90, 95 yards. Big game for him. Um, Ja'Cory Hyder led Lamar with four catches, 117 yards in the touchdown. Jordan Montgomery had eight tackles to lead Valley. Um, Donovan Parham had two and a half tackles for loss and two sacks to lead the defense. And Eric Campbell had an interception for Valley. Uh, Braden Faulkner led. Um, Led Lamar with nine tackles. He also had one tackle for loss. And um, they had two interceptions from uh, Lewis and Stevens. So, like I said, Valley played a pretty solid game here. Um, they get Murray State next week and then um, and then Nickel State. So, they 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 close out their non-conference slate with two more road games before they come home on the 28th to host the Alcorn. Um, and speaking of the Braves, they they went to Nashville to take on um to take on Vanderbilt and again you know just not a not a great offensive effort for Alcorn they dropped this game uh 55 to to nothing um uh, they they uh, continue to kind of struggle you know they they have to kind of find their way um these two FBS games have not been not been great for the Braves um as, as like i said as vandy jumped out to a 27 nothing first half lead um before they they scored um 28 points in a in the second half to to basically just shut this thing down uh all corn not a great offensive night only 71 yards of offense um eight or 16 passing two turnovers that through the air um gave up 342 yards uh total offense Vandy ran the ball for 242. They only threw the ball 14 times. They had 11 uh, yards through the 100. They had 100 yards through the air, uh, 11 of 14. Um, they did have one touchdown, no turnovers for the for the uh, Commodores. Six and a half uh, yards per per play for them. They did have nine penalties for 90 yards. Um, Alcorn went one of 11 on third down. Um, they did have two sacks as a defense. Um, never got in the red zone. Uh, Vandy got in the red zone five times and scored all five times. The search for, you know, the search for the, the signal caller continues. Um, Xavier Vaughn was five and nine for 20, 20 yards to lead all corn. Um, Cameron Stewart led them with uh, 10 carries for 29 yards. And Travarius Griffin had two catches for 14 yards. So they have to, you know, you, you know, you can say they play two FBS games, but they just haven't really looked good offensively. Um, and they have to find a way to make make that better. They play Ever Waters um on Saturday. So you go from one extreme probably to the nut to the next. Um, and then they play Magnesia the following week. So you probably won't really get a full idea of what all corn is until until the um until the um until the twenty first when they go to Magnese. So just been a, a a brutal start for all corn, like I said. You know, you kind of, you know, you, you didn't really expect, you know, wins in these two games, but you kind of thought the offense would look better, especially, you know, a, as you move forward 
Um, they still have a lot of a lot of questions to answer, and uh, we'll see if they can. You know, we, we we'll see if they can get there. Um, but right now, it's just not it's just not looking looking great. Um, our last game of the night, and you know, salute to salute to Pine Bluff, man. They 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 did what you want to do in a game like this, man. They came out, they scored points, and they they had a great time. Um, seventy three to nothing over Arkansas Baptist. Um, went into the half up um fifty two to nothing. Uh, so they were able to jump all over these guys. Um, o- o- uh, O'Shawn Ross had three touchdowns on the night. Uh, Jonas Davis had a couple of touchdowns and they, you know, they, they really, you know, like I said, they really jumped all over these guys and did what you're supposed to do against an overmatched opponent. Um, 25 first downs for them, 320 on the ground, average 10 yards a carry with eight touchdowns, uh, 350 through the air for, for the Golden Lions. Um, only gave up 161 yards of offense, had 670. Um, this, regardless of the opponent, this is one of the best Pine Bluff performances offensively or defensively that they've had in quite some time. Uh, they 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 forced six turnovers, um, only had one. So, like I said, they dominated this game. Um, they finished the night with um, with two sacks and six or seven in the red zone. Just you know, a, a great night for Pine Bluff, and this is what they needed, especially coming off of that that seventy to nothing loss to Arkansas on the turnaround the following week, and and basically do the same thing to somebody else is, is a great thing. Uh, Makai Hagan's 15 or 22, 350 yards, two touchdowns. Um, great game for him. Like I said, O'Shawn Ross, five carries, 100 yards, three touchdowns. Um, Javon, Giovanni Gibson, six for 172 and a touchdown. Uh, defensively, Jaden uh, Kelly led the team with six tackles. Um, Anias Lukeman had two and a half tackles for loss and one and a half sacks. And Amari, Amarion Mingo had two interceptions. So they did exactly what you want to do in a game like this, man. You want to come out and you don't want to play with these guys. You know, you want to knock them out and get it over quick and, and, and move on to, to, to your next game, which for them is uh, um is at is in Memphis against Tennessee State next Saturday in the Southern Heritage Classic. So they have that game and then they play um they play Central Arkansas the following week um before they before they get into conference play. So they have a couple more games uh, against FCS opponents. So you, you kind of got to put this one away and get ready for a tough matchup uh, the following week and and um, find out really where you are. But you can't discount this kind of game for a team like Pine Bluff. They needed this kind of effort, um, regardless of who the opponent was. They needed this. Um, for any, For other teams, I would look at it a different way. But for them, they need positivity. And they needed to do this. So um, this was a very, very much needed win um, in this way for the Golden Lions. And that would do it for week two, man. 11, 12 games on the schedule for week two. We got nine games on the schedule for, for week three. And just quickly, uh, Purview is at Michigan State. Edward Waters is at, is at Alcorn. Bethune Cookman is at Western Michigan. Georgetown, Kentucky is at Alabama a and Valley is at Murray State. Pine Bluff is at Tennessee State, where against Tennessee State in Memphis. Southern is at Jackson State. Grambling is at Texas A&M Commerce, and Alabama A&M is at Samford. So, four, we got nine games on the schedule next week. So, you know, not as packed, and, and and those numbers will start to shrink as we get into conference play. So, with that being said, man, I'm your tour guide around the Spike Sewell signing out, and I will catch y'all on the rebound. Peace. <laughs>